Hello and welcome again everybody, my name is McDonald's guys, today we're playing Satellite, that's right. <clears throat> Viewer discretion is advised. This game does contain, does contain sexual content. And that's a, that's a disclaimer. So we will blow this. Yeah, Toba. Uh, once he's dropped on a conversation between Bidey and Gigabyte. Okay. Here's a low budget model not intended to, for advanced artificial intelligence. As a one gigabyte kernel cache, cache was considered a disgrace. Even other androids teased him about it. Oddly, negative traits and habits are the first things robots learn from humans. But being rude to humans would have gotten the robots dismantled, so they were rude to each other instead. Being nicknamed Gigabyter is the same thing for a robot as being called millimeter as a human when you, your pants are down during pre-induction examinations but it was the small size of his cash that kept his enemies from going con from gaining control over him that's one of the reasons he kept the name and now two idiot council guards brawn and toga pick on him because of it I spent their entire childhood playing with those brats, body would say, getting more and more upset and apparently slowly learning how to hate. The time, this time he roars. Malfunction, annihilate humans, annihilate, kill, exterminate. His giant fists vibrate like jackhammers and stretch toward the guard. The guy flattens himself against the wall in fear. I pat Batty, Batty's hand. Let it go, or he'll crap himself. I don't want to smell his shit during the council meeting. Ventilation, ventilation won't be able to handle this stinker. I have orders. Chip. I take pity on him and swipe my chip through the scanner. The door moves aside, and we enter the council hall. Batty needs to duck through the doorway to get in and no no coinage that they're enforcing the ID chips coin coin it coincidence I don't know it must be a reason the chips are unless are useless everyone knows each other anyway at the very least the guard and the council members do unless someone's trying to spin to send in a twin. I squint at Annie with her prosthetic arms and legs. Yeah, try to find another toother survivor. Her height and strength is matched only by that of the terror of the tribe leader. <coughs> Chiron, even if you found a big guy like him somewhere, he'd have to spend a lot of time growing out hair like that. Layla, tall, tall, gracious with thick, long braids and a beautiful appearance. Although I've seen how skillfully she handles a, dub a double axe, her talents are unmatched. If anything, she would. Hmm, could that be it? It's possible she may have sent someone's twin into the city and is taking precautions just in case. But doing so has given her away, and I wasn't invited because I'm against the war with Angel City. <clears throat> well now, fellow comrades, conspirators, and guerrillas, you found a citizen twin and are now planning for war. What spies you are, you're acting childish. Officially, I have no right to cha to chassis the tribe council, but everyone knows that I'm one who who always keeps Layla in check. Even she's grateful for it, but not this time, apparently. 
At first, her face contorts in surprise, looking to the council members in search of the traitor. Her gaze stops on Car on Kyra, my old count, my old friend. His face expresses no less surprise. It seems I've guessed right. It appears from the looks of your faces that I'm correct. Then I decide to ex excavate, excavate the situation even further. What made you think you could fool Angel City's advanced guard system? Layla quickly pulls herself together. What makes you think you're welcome at this meeting of the small circle? Here we go again, she wants to push me away. So I won't get in the way of her massacre. No, we don't agree. Listen here, sweetie, oh boy. I rudely addressed Layla on purpose, drawing her attention. She's always been self-aware of her strong personality and is proud of it. For whatever reason, men fall in love with her at first sight. Women too, as a matter of fact. I'm jealous. I'm still, I'm still jealous myself. I haven't entirely come to terms with her choosing Chiron over me. Where's that? That's a well, Ryan. Rain, whatever. Though I know I never stood a chance against him, but even burly Chiron is a mere shadow next to her, humble and submissive. And it, and it isn't Layla's enormous height or amazing figure. Women as tall as her usually look masculine and clumsy. Yet Layla has elegance and grace, with only, which only intensifies her charisma and dominant personality traits. And that's exactly why, for, for reveal, see, addressing her as sweetie sounded so ridiculous, I imagine it made her pretty angry. I suppose childhood negativity is to blame for her attempts to become an outcast due to being different tall and remarkably strong I dare say many boys had their nose their noses broken before the teenage suckers realized she wasn't a girl to be messed with bump bomb only guessing the most important thing is that the trick worked Layla will now be listening to me very carefully for the next few minutes to not miss an opportunity to call out and humiliate me with her vicious sarcasm which means everything I say will most likely be examined and scrutinized it's true that I am not allowed to officially attend the council of the small circle but unofficially I've always been present when important decisions are made do you, do you know why I will speak freely as there are no strangers here I complete you we are much closer to each other than you may think I see Chiron tense, his frightening muscles, a pulsating vein protruding from his forehead. Jealous. You jelly, bro. You jelly. Don't get jelly, bro. True, we may be very old friends, but I, if I encroach on Layla's territory, the big guy will tear me apart with his bare hands. In his case, it's not a joke. He's entirely capable of putting a threat like that into action. Which is why I need to get through that this slippery situation as soon as possible. I have no doubt he's taken my words the wrong way. Both Chiron and I complete you. We are a team. We always have been ever since the very first SE Grand Prix when we met. I am your spare conscience your supplementary logic the missing part of your prudence Kyren completes you as well he is your strength and tenderness kiss ass 
I notice the big guy turn red. Either he understands what I'm saying or has it all wrong. <laughs> I just like that face. It's like, oh. Oh. Knowing him, I presume that is probably the latter. That new, that no case is thinking of something intimate. Kinky. We are the hmm. we are the perfect being, but only when you're only when we're together apart, we are unable to compensate for each other's shortcomings. And all people have them. The ideal leader of the prank tribe, the entire community of clans in the salt desert. But we are a team. If you break that team apart, you will become a leader of the opportunity. No, of the ordinary. Despite your own outstanding personal qualities. Looking at her, I see that I've brought Layla to her senses. She analyzed everything I've said and has come to somewhat disappointing conclusion that I speak the truth now my fate will finally be decided I have officially defined my place within the council and I will be able to keep <laughs> Sounds about right, Layla. Sounds about right. It's like all this bickering. She's like, wake me when it's over. It's like, la 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 la. I want to kill some people. La 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 la. la. Let me know when it's over. The bickering can stop. Alrighty. <laughs> An incarcerate Hal calls out ending in a draw in, in, in a drawn out exhale. Henny Everyone has forgotten her. She's yawning, yawning desperately, loudly, wide enough to make her jaw crunch. She rubs her drooping eyes, slaps her cheeks at that, then knows that everyone is looking at her. And uh you guys go on with your uh cotton candy top. Wake me up. When you're done and willing to get down to business, oh, I like that. Annie makes herself comfortable in her chair, closes her eyes. I hear Gigabyte quietly chuckle as he goes back to blending in with the wallpaper. Where is Gigabyte? Now you listen to me, sweetie. Uh oh, this is bad. I overdid it. I'm a psychologist. But I was sure I knew the tribe leader, my old friend. Since you're so smart, use the amazing intellect of yours and think about this. I know what you're trying to do here. You want to officially become an advisor. To gain voting privileges and weasel your way into the upper ruling circle of the tribe. No, not at all. All I wanted was for you to hear me out. Shut up, sweetie. Here we go. She's analyzed what I said and has found a suitable way to strike back. What's more, she turned my weapon against me. Looks like I'm going to be sweetie for a very long time. Our leader is not a woman to hold grudges. She's merely evil with a good memory. <coughs> Don't delude yourself. An advisor position would be perfect for her restraining my imperialist ambitions and bloodthirstiness oh boy am i wrong do you not dream of ending a murderous war and saving many lives all you need to do is gain leverage with the tribe leader which you already have because the leader is your old friend and you've studied her very well in the years that you've known her i'll be a son of a toother who, who completes who She's reading me like an open file. Yes, Ryan, sweetie. 
too can play this game, the perfect world where I am the smartest and cleverest has begun has begun to crack. At least I'm still the kindest. Annie snorts in her sleep, smacks her lips, and goes back to quietly snuffling Gigabyte or chuckles again. Where is Gigabyte? I wanna see Gigabyte. Yeah, buddy, I see the humor in this situation too, but I'm not laughing, unfortunately. Fine, you win. Layla doesn't let me finish. One? You think I'm fighting against you? What a horrible wicked. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh. Sneeze spell. Attack. Ah! <laughs> One, you think I'm fighting against you? What a horrible, wicked lady I am. We are protecting you, you fool. Protect me from what? I suddenly lose my voice. You, from yourself. From life. From death. How pathetic. No, I better keep my mouth shut, especially since I don't know what I'm talking about, or rather don't want to know. Staring... Starting to wisen up, are we? Oh my goodness. Oh, sorry about that. It's time you grow up, boy. It's one synth synth meat cake a day enough for you? No. You're used to hunger, of course you are. You're young, strong, but did you know that seniors and children get half as much? They aren't as useful as you with your spy drones. If you weren't the one compiling maps of the nearest water sources, you'd know real hunger. I'm speechless stunned by this revelation. Why had they been hiding this from me? No, perhaps I should have seen this myself, but didn't want to. Why? This isn't only the result of my friend's concern for me, but I haven't seen all of this. I really am living in my own imaginary world. Yeah, well, when it comes to survival, surviving, sacrifices have to be made, and unfortunately, children and seniors get half of what you eat, right? Therefore, keeping the willing, keeping the people alive who mean more to the ship versus the ones who don't do anything. It's quite understandable. You should have seen this coming. Right. More and more food synthesizers have been breaking. We don't have the parts to fix them. The citizens of Angel City refuse to give us what we need at even thrice the price. Instead of parts, they give us low quality pre prepared food. They're keeping us on a short leash. We are their delivery boys, their service for delivering water, which have been pumped dry. How many leagues ahead? That's all unofficial, though. Officially, they attack any one of us that comes too close to the city. To them, we are nothing but fire-eating wildlings. We, we're barely even human. Thank you all for stopping by. My name is McDonald's. I hope you have a wonderful time, wonderful day. Remember, make your make this day a great, a wonderful day. I will see you all next time.